Alright, so let's go back to the almost the, the very beginning. We talked about the Zoracle or the business assessment. So two questions about that. What, what does the business assessment tell me? And will the business assessment assessment give me the perfect franchise for me? So um, it's a little bit of science. It's a little bit of disc. It's a little bit of like 30 different kind of uh, scientific uh, profile assessments put together into what we call a Zoracle or a business assessment. Uh, will it help identify a franchise system that would be uh, good for you? Yes, we actually have a, a system that 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 Zoracle will match based on the characteristics of, you know, if you're a promoter, if you're an achiever, all these things that we're going to see. Uh, it's going to show you probably what you have a good idea about yourself. Um, but what it really helps, it helps helps the franchise consultant you're working with and also the franchise systems use this not all of them but many of them use it because they know that the top performing franchisees uh in their systems and they can say oh well all of all of them had these um attributes so that's how it all kind of plays together but yes we we do have a system that that will help initially it's not going to hone in on one franchise and say this is the end all be all but it will definitely putting all these pieces together with the thesis on you and your goals and lifestyle and what you're really looking for uh that rounds out like how we can really start honing in on different franchise models for you so uh it's you know can, can, have i ever matched somebody without a zoracle yes i have but it does really add a lot of value to it. So that's why we we want you to spend eight minutes and complete it. It's not that big of a deal. And if we end up getting you a better fit because of that, it's well worth it for you. All right, great. So you talked about, you know, we do the, we do the Zoracle, we get on a phone call, we talk about it. And then after that's done, you mentioned that, you know, at some point we're going to, you're going to give me, you're going to give me, if I'm the franchisee, a number of business models or franchises to review. How does that process work? Sure. So usually we would set a about an hour meeting um, and we're going to meet on Zoom and I would be sharing my screen, sharing video, sharing websites, sharing uh, brochures, and I'll be talking to you about the high levels of each of the franchises. You know, here's a pest control company. The reason it may be a good fit for you, you talked about wanting a business model that has recurring revenue. You talked about a business model that has government contracts or the ability to uh, stack in some government contracts, a recession resilient business. Well, here's this brand and this is why I think it may be a good fit and it does check a lot of the, uh, the things that you identified to be a good fit. So we're going to do a high level about each franchise, all seven or eight or ten, and then you're going to be ranking them. And so... From there, once we identify three or four, we're going to put you in contact with that franchise development representative. They're going to give you an extreme deep dive. And then from that conversation, you might say, I like it. Let's keep on going down the, the due diligence process with that franchise. Or it's okay to say, hey, look, uh, it's not what I thought. But let's scratch this one from our list. And it's, it, that's how we, we roll. That's why we want you to talk to several because it's important to understand what is, you know, how strong is the, uh, is the, is the corporate location? What are they doing for, uh, to help us in marketing? Are they, do they have a call center? Things like that, right? Like you're going to be diving into all these. We're going to talk high levels on each of these, but just, just scratching the surface in the initial conversation when we do our business model review. All right. So you mentioned that you mentioned, uh, that you, uh, would, uh, present several business models or franchises to me if I'm the franchisee. What if I don't like any of them? Do we start over? Do, how's that work? Yeah, Have I mean, you ever worked with somebody where they didn't like any of them? Yeah, you know, sometimes I would blame it on myself that I didn't really dive in and build the right thesis. Maybe I didn't spend enough time initially. It's really, I think, understanding we have to build a rapport. We have to really get in and really figure out like what you're really looking for. And sometimes it could be 
myself or somebody on my team that's just not asking the right questions, or maybe you left some things out. So is it okay if we showed you a batch and you said, well, I reviewed these, but what I'm really looking for is this. That happens from occasion. I would say about 75, 80% of the time we, we nail, I, I would say we nail it. We show you brands that you're really interested in, but we do go back to the drawing board. Sometimes things come up and you're like, I really like this brand. But like, you know, I don't like the fact that there's other territory, uh, other franchisees really close to me and I, it's not a big enough territory, but I like this business model. We might go and find you something very similar that has a lot of wide open space in that particular business model. So yeah, there's, look, it's, there's no perfect science uh, because things change, people change. And I think it's really just a component of working together and building rapport. Because each week we want to meet with you and just touch base as you're, as you're having these calls with the different franchises. It's important to stay in like just a quick 20-minute check-in just to see where you're at. A lot of questions come up. That's why we always want to check in each week because, look, if you're talking to three different franchises, you're taking notes, you're jumping on validation calls, there's a lot to it. So we want to keep you going. Plus, we have great resources. We have franchise attorneys. We have CPAs. We have checklists. Uh, questions asked. Uh, so you don't go in when you're you're calling somebody that owns the franchise, and what we call a validation call. So you just have a series of questions, so you don't get cold feet and, and don't ask any good questions. We always we're going to coach you through the whole process. Okay. Um, in in that so so say I pick three business models that I like. Um, I I think you said the next step was the franchise discovery call. Yeah, it's what we call introduction to Zors, franchise Zors. Okay. So after you pick your pick the couple that you you're interested in, we're going to make introductions, and then they're going to schedule you in the next. Sometimes it's in two or three days, the same day. Sometimes it's a week later, depending on how busy everybody is and your schedule. Uh, and then you're going to jump on these discovery calls, and then you're going to just start going through. And if you're interested, you're going to. Most of them have a very similar process, where they take you initial call. Then they send you that franchise disclosure document. Then they have another call where they review the franchise disclo disclosure document and do unit economics. And then, you know, another call could be validation calls, could be group validation calls. It could be one-on-one -on -one calls where you're calling. Um, then there's usually an executive call. Um, now you're moving down further and further as diligence is coming. You're, you're getting, you're doing more validation calls. You have an executive call with the leadership team. Uh, weeks later, months later, then they would, after that, and you're still enjoying what you're doing and you're liking the business, then you're going to, um, they would most likely in invite you to a discovery day. And the time you get to a discovery day, all your financing questions, you you know, how you're going to fund the deal. Uh, you've done a, most of your diligence and then you go to discovery day. That's like you fly into their corporate location and you usually, it could be a day in a life, meet the team, lunches, dinners, that kind of thing. And then at the end of that, they're going to either award you the franchise or they're going to say, um, you know, we're not interested in having you on, on board. That doesn't happen that often. They're not going to bring you out to discovery day. Does it ever happen? Yes, it does. Sometimes a husband and wife, the husband could be just, you know, on the, on every call. The wife hasn't been on any of the calls. They fly to Discovery Day. Wife is then now, oh, I'm going to run the business. Well, that's completely different, right? So things like that pop up. At the end of the day, the franchise systems are successful or will be successful only if they bring in other, if they bring in franchisees, if they bring in Zs that are going to, that are going to, you know, grow the system and, and, and be successful, right? They don't want to bring in bad apples. So that's the whole thing. I've had, I've had experiences um, where I had two uh, different candidates, same franchise. They loved one of one of the gentlemen. The other one, they're like, you know, he's marginal, but you know, we think he he'll he'll end up being okay. But you can tell when they really that, that when you have a perfect fit for the franchise, they, they're gonna they're gonna really try to get you in the system. And so it's not a one size fits fits all because there's always going to be in any franchise system, in any business, in any sports team, there's always the top 
starters, and then there's the middle of the road, and then there's the lower quartile. You know, at minimum, you want to be an average type, but they're looking for the top quartile type of uh, people that come into the business systems. So as a, as a franchisee, maybe I'm good at, you know, operations or sales, or I've done that type of work before, but I don't know much about business. How, how will I know what to look for in the, in the FDD review when, when the, when the franchisor is there and I'm there and they're presenting me that with, with information I just don't understand. Yeah. I mean, it's three or 400 pages. Sometimes there's 23 items. Item seven is investment range. Item 19 is, is the financials that they're showing the performance of the other uh, owners in the system and the corporate locations. Uh, they're going to talk about if they, what other um, companies they may own. They're going to talk about the ownership uh, track record. Is there anything bankruptcies in the past? So we do have a 45 minute video uh, that a, an attorney that works with our franchise association put together. I always send it to you. Uh, and that's why towards the end of the process and you, when you're re getting ready to probably invest in this franchise system, we're going to have you, uh, we're going to at least recommend you have a consultation with a franchise attorney to, to talk about the franchise agreement and FTD. But you're going to be reading through that. I would, I know it's a lot of pages and a lot of people don't like to read, um, myself included. But when you're signing for a big commitment like this, it's important to go through and really get your highlighter out, um, make a series list of questions so you can ask the, your, the rep that you've been working with at the particular franchise. This is all part of the diligence process. Um, you know, a lot of it's boilerplated, like in loan documents, all this stuff is boilerplated, but it is important that you really understand what you're getting into because it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big commitment. You're, you're signing a franchise agreement for 5, 10, 15 years. Uh, and you got to understand what the rules are and you got to play within this rules. And so the reason franchises are around, because one, a lot of people uh, might not be able to start a business from scratch, but they can implement and follow a recipe. And that's why franchises are usually a good fit for most people coming out of the corporate world. Okay. Um, you mentioned a long time ago in this call about you know, not every franchise is available in every territory. So what, what if I find a franchise? We, we go through all the steps and getting to the point where I'm like, yeah, I like these three. And do you do a territory search for me? And if you find, hey, there's nothing within 100 miles, what do we do? We actually have a system in our, uh, in our intranet, I guess, if they still use intranets. Uh, where we actually do territory checks. So when I'm doing the initial research, I'm doing a territory check, and that's coming back if 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 it's available, or sometimes they say there's an alternative location or territory which is right next door. So you already be you already know now. If 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 we go through a process of a few months, uh, generally if it's a very um, emerging franchise system, sometimes there's some pressure because. Some of these franchises move really quick. Not all of them, but some of them do. So as a, usually if you're going through your discovery, they would at least tell you, hey, look, we have somebody else that's interested in that territory. They usually try to give you the first right if you've been looking at that franchise and haven't moved forward yet. But circling back, we're doing the territory checks up front because we're not going to, we're, you know, we don't want to show you something that is not available for you. Got it. Um, you mentioned, and you talked a little bit about the validation calls. What, what, what is a validation call, um, during this process? What, what does it entail? So a validation call. So you're going to review the FDD and you're going to, they're going to do a, uh, FDD review. I'm talking about the franchise itself with you, the, the franchise development representative for the franchise. Um, and they're so they're going to review that they're going to review the uh, item 19 the unit economics but really that's just going to give you an, uh, a little bit of info really i think one of the most important parts of this whole process is calling other people that have owned the, that own this franchise whether they they're getting started whether they've owned it for 5 or 7 years you want to talk to 
a little bit. Some of these franchises have different models. Some are owner, owner operator, and they also have a semi absentee component to it, where you get hire a manager. So you, if you, if you're going to be more semi absentee, you want to m- talk to the majority of people that are semi absentee because that's how you're going to be. You're going to hire a general manager. So you want to do as many of these calls as you can. You want to be ready with questions. You want to see like wh- what are, what were the pain points for you? So you know, getting started. How's the support been? How's the marketing? Where's, where's the struggles? What, what you want to know pretty much everything. Uh, Maybe they're very busy because they're expanding. Like how's their, you know, once you sign the dotted line, how fast are you ramping up? All these questions need to be addressed. And that's why the validation is super important. And also projections. If, even if you're not getting SBA loan, I I suggest everybody build out uh, projections for the first 24 months, month by month, because that's what we do for SBA financing. And I think that's another big component on top, uh, along with the validation, that's very important. So I think somewhere in the process is is an executive call. Now I've, I've as a franchisee, I've met, you know, I, I had the, uh, the franchise discovery call. Uh, we went over the FDD. Um, what is different about that executive call and, and will you or a partner be on the call with me or is that something I have to go alone? Sure. So sometimes we do jump on the initial calls with you. Um, it really depends. Some of you don't really want us there or they don't necessarily care. I mean, we don't have all the time in the world to be on every call, but if you wanted us to be on certain calls, usually when you get to the executive call, that's usually usually just you or and and your spouse will be on that call, and you've already gone through a lot of the process, and that's really more or less the decision making makers at that franchise, kind of giving you a little bit more high level. Uh, they're you know want to get to know you a little bit better because they're having to make a decision if they're going to you know invite you to Discovery Day. Um, so the important thing for those you know. Obviously, everybody's time is, is, is valuable. So show up if it's a Zoom meeting and they're on, if it, most likely they're going to be on the camera. You should be on the camera. Uh, today, Bill and I are, have matching t shirts, but you should, you should have a nice shirt on or polo shirt, right? Like uh, present yourself uh, well because they're evaluating you just like you're evaluating them. So typically, you're going to do leadership call, your uh, executive call yourself. Um, but we will always be there to help prep you. Like, you know, if we have any information, you know, usually we have relationships with the, the different franchises, any 411 we can give you, we will. Um, but that's really just part of the process, um, as you're moving along, but you're not going to do that until you're a couple weeks in, uh, doing the due diligence and, you know, progressing down the, down the road with, with the franchise. So it sounds like the franchise or is interviewing me and maybe my spouse or business partner as much as we're evaluating their franchise. That's correct. Right. That's correct. At the end of the day, they want people to be successful in the system because it's, it reflects on them. Like they're, everything is all about growing and being happy. Right. So if you bring in the wrong person and they're not happy, it's not going to be good for anybody. So that's why we're you that's why most of these franchise systems use the business assessment just like I use it to help identify because they know certain characteristics and traits of people that are performing well within the system. And that's at the, the at the end of the day, that's everybody's goal is to be successful within this business. Okay, so having said that, I'm on this call. Um I, I'm I'm wearing like business uh what they call it business attire, you know, maybe, maybe it's a shirt and tie, maybe it's a polo shirt, that kind of thing. But, um, any, any questions I should expect them to ask me or any questions I should maybe ask them to, to, to show them that, Hey, yeah, I'm ready for this. And I'm going to be a good, you know, owner for your franchise. Any, any pointers or tips you could give when we get to that late stage? I just think it's it's important for you to really as as much as you can understand the understand the business model. Um you're not going to be an expert by any means by just doing a few calls and 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 
right? But you should at least have a certain grasp of what the business is going to do, how it operates, um, and you know, be be a, a good student. Really, that's what they're expecting. Like you're you're there and you're asking engaging questions um, about the about the business model. I mean, you're not going to know everything, so you're going to ask the questions that come up, and that's what they want to know. That like one this this person. Uh, this candidate is very interested in the brand. They have a great track record. They want to know about you as an individual. What have you, what are you doing before? You know, why did you want, why do you want to own a business? What's your background? Uh, it's really just a feeling out and building rapport type of call just to see like, Hey, are we going to be a good match together? Um, and that's really what it, what it's about. Like, do you have what it takes and do you like what you hear from us? That's really what the call is about. Gotcha. So the next steps are discovery day and award day. So discovery day is where I show up at their headquarters, right? And assuming same things that go on in the executive call, you know, be professional, have questions, present yourself in the best possible light. Um, there's that. And then if they like what they see and, and I still want to move on, then they go, th then we move on to award day, right? Um, yeah. What yeah. Are, so you go to discovery. So yeah, so you you typically go to the discovery day, and then usually that that day or the next day they're ready to award you territory. And at that point, like you're going to discovery day because you're pretty sure this is going to be a good fit for you, and you're done most of your due diligence. And usually you're gonna you're gonna accept the at, at award day. You, you're it's not like oh I got awarded this franchise now I got to think if I want to really do it. It's more like I've done all my due diligence subject to getting a franchise agreement, review with an attorney, meeting with my, you know, finalizing some things with my CPA. So you're going into this that I want this business model and maybe something changes at Discovery Day where you feel it's not a good fit. But like your financing is lined up. This isn't just like, hey, I'm going to go and get a free steak. No, <laughs> you got this is like I'm, I'm ready to commit, but I just want to do my, you know, do the final kind of kick the tires, meet the team in person. That's what a Discovery Day is all about. All right. So earlier you talked about um, SBA financing and, and stuff like that. Um, at what point in this process should I, should I be thinking about, you know, financing or funding uh, this, this franchise purchase? Should I, should I talk to you about that at the very beginning? Like, Hey, I'm not, I'm not real liquid here, but I really want to do this. And I can, you know, I've looked at the the numbers and, you know, it requires a hundred thousand dollar investment. I don't have that. When should I tell you that? And, and what should I do about it? Sure. So this is important. So the advantage that I have in this world is that I come from SBA background, meaning I still have a company that help people, helps people by franchises with SBA financing, along with business acquisitions and all different sorts, sorts of government guaranteed loans. So I know the questions to ask. I know how to pre-qualify people for these programs. So it's better to know towards the beginning because I don't want to show you a franchise that's going to be, you know, a total investment of 600 grand and you only want, you only want to put up, you only have 50 grand to your name. Because we need 10%, 20% down plus post-close liquidity. So this is early on in the process. If you're low liquidity, I'm not going to show you certain franchises. So this is all the stuff we're doing in the beginning. Now you might not, you're going to go down once we have you pre-qualified or, you know, some people have a, the money to pay cash. Some people have it, an equity line they can write it. Right, uh, go, go get an equity line. They have a million dollars equity, five hundred thousand dollars equity. Some people have a retirement account that they could roll into Robs, and they they've talked to a company that they know they can do it with their particular uh, retirement plan. Um, so yes, this is important to know upfront because once you get to Discovery Day and you're like everybody's waiting because until you put a deposit or pay for that franchise fee, it's fair game. They're obviously going to wa want you because they've brought you through the process, but at the, at the end of the day, it's it's progress, right? Like, and if you're not willing to commit after going and doing every single d 
due diligence piece, they they sometimes are forced to like, you know, have somebody that came in later than you. So it's just good to be, uh, have all your ducks in a row and know, and know what you're going to do. And, and also, um, even if you do have the cash, most likely you probably want to finance it anyways, because you want to keep reserves and things like that. So I think understanding that component is, 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 uh, crucial. All right. So earlier you talked about uh, SBA. They want 24 months of projections. And you said, even if I don't get a SBA financing, I should probably do 24 months of product projections. Um, again, if I don't, if I'm not well versed in business um, on the finance side, what kind of projections are we talking about? Do you have a template I could use or? Yeah, we have a template. It's actually fairly easy. I'm not a, I'm not a spreadsheet person, and 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 really, what it's a component. Let's just say it's a home service business. Uh, or let's say it's a handyman company. Okay, uh, as you're making validation calls, you're gonna talk to some of the people that own the franchise in different markets, and you're gonna say, well, you know, every time you get a service call, what's usually the ticket price of that? Well, it's you know, four hundred and seventy dollars. Great. How many? Service calls do you typically do in a day? How do, how many service calls does one technician? Well, they can usually do seven or eight service calls in a day or six. Right now, we know that equation because we're probably going to start with one technician and one truck, and then month six we're we're we've got we've ramped up. Now we're going to get another technician and another truck. Those are the real questions we need to ask for validation, and then. We're going to look at item seven in the FTD, which is the investment range. Okay, well, you got to have a one truck. You're going to need a marketing fee of fifteen grand. Franchise fee is forty nine thousand five hundred. Working capital for four months. Employee salary for the first three months. Now we know what the total project costs are. The inv the total, um, which is we need for the loan, anyways. But even if you're not using, doing the loan, and then we know that you have a point of sale system, POS, that costs $500 a month, which is a recurring expense. These all go out there. And then at the end of the day, the beautiful thing is, this is the, probably the most important thing is to actually see the numbers to understand the real business model. And then it gives you questions as you're doing validation. That's why I think it's so important. And a lot of the other consultants don't have an SBA background, so they don't really see this as such a valuable piece. But because my background is in the financing, I'm like, this is a really critical part, just like validation. These things go together hand in hand. And then as you're doing the projections, then you, I think it gives you a level of comfort that you're making the right decision because you've exhausted a lot of your questions because you're going through, well, how many service calls can you do? What, you know, what's the cost of goods? Like do, how much material do I need to buy? What are the, what, what's the sales tax? This is, so it's not, it's not overwhelming. It's actually fairly easy. And once you laid it out, you could probably do the projections fairly quickly. Okay. So um, along the financing lines again, um, whether it's SBA financing or bank financing, um, you know, I've gotten car loans before from banks. I've gotten, you know, a mortgage, you know, credit cards, things like that. But from the business side, what are the banks looking for in terms of, you know, considering me for, you know, a pretty sizable loan, considering that the business itself has not made any revenue yet? Sure. So, sure. So you, generally, 680 or better credit score. Generally, you're going to have, uh, if the total investment is, I'm going to just use 100 grand, uh, that you have uh ten percent or twenty percent of that so let's just use twenty percent for this drill so you have twenty percent so you have twenty twenty thousand dollars in your bank plus ten percent plus post closed liquidity which is a ten percent of the loan amount so you have ninety uh additional nine thousand dollars so essentially if you have you need enough capital you need a good credit score and you need outside income to support your outside expenses you need a franchise that's on the sba directory or on is a friend data certified or is uh approved at the bank level 
whether they have the other two or not. Some banks will just approve a, a franchise system. They don't need to look at Fran data or SBA directory. But assuming you have that, no BKs and no recent lates, um, you're a U.S. citizen or permanent resident, boom, and, and everything else checks out, it's really an easy process. It just seems overwhelming, but it's actually, there's a lot of paperwork. Uh, depending on the loan amount, sometimes they want um, larger loans. You might need a term life insurance policy for loans generally are, that are over 500000 not so much for under 500000 Um You need to have your leases for your automobile, your, your van or truck or whatever the FDD requires prior to closing. If you need an office lease, you need the lease agreement in place. You can't do it after. It has to be everything has to be ready in that component. But other than that, 680 credit score, enough liquidity, uh, outside income to cover outside expenses, and a franchise system that's approved. Uh, that's probably not. It's not one. It doesn't have one location. It probably has multiple locations to be an approved franchise. But we can work around almost any situation. So even if it only had a few locations, I have banks that I can get it approved with. So, anyways, hope that answers it. Yeah, it does. Um, that's all the questions I have for today. Well, thank you, Bill. That was great. I hope we gave you guys a good overview about the franchise discovery buying process. Uh, I wanted it to be uh, thorough. I think it was a good overview. As you can see, there's multiple steps, but um, everything is pretty self-explanatory. If you want to get started, you can go to bookwithbo.com and we can take you through our process, either myself or we have a team that can help you um, go through this process. So anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you're looking to acquire a business, stop scrolling on Biz Buy Sell and visit FranchiseResaleListings.com. We'll do a customized search. You can get on our weekly distribution where we're sending new inventory weekly to your inbox. So visit FranchiseResaleListings.com and opt in today. See you there. Hey guys, Bo Exian here. If you enjoyed what you saw, please subscribe to this channel. We talk all things financing. I've been in the lending industry for over 20 years and I'm happy to answer your questions and provide great content.